In this episode, I'm finally diving into the wild world of electric motor carring. Let's go. I've never talked about this in my videos before, but I'm a huge fan of electric cars. You know I like rare and unusual vehicles, and back when car magazines and shows like Motor Week were the only places to get your car fix, nothing was more rare than the occasional story about a home-built electric car or even electric concept cars, like the 1990 GM Impact, which later evolved into the now famous and controversial EV1. Even as a kid, I remember wondering why mom and dad's car didn't just plug in and charge overnight like my Power Wheels, which offered the signature EV neck-snapping off-the-line torque in trunk down form. The craziest thing about electric cars to me is their history, which dates back to the early 1800s. If you want some really surprising reading, just check out the Wikipedia topic on this. It's amazing stuff. Over the years, I followed electric cars with great interest, but as time went by, they seemed like a form of transportation that would always exist in the promise of the future. But that all changed in 2006 when a scrappy upstart company by the name of Tesla, helmed by tech entrepreneur Elon Musk, dropped the prototype for their first ever production vehicle, the Roadster. The idea of the Roadster was different than any mass-produced electric car concept of the past. It was cool looking and fast. When the first production Roadster hit magazines and websites in early 2008, it impressed and amazed tech and car aficionados alike. This is when Tesla officially popped up on my radar and stayed there. Since then, I've followed Tesla very closely and with great interest. Throughout the impossible task of launching and growing a car company, and an electric one at that, the challenges Tesla have faced over the years have been significant and hair-raising, especially if you've watched on as an investor. It's been a wild ride even from where I sit as an enthusiast, but one that's been thrilling since day one. So after years of him hawing and waiting for the next best version to come along, I finally did it. I clicked the order button on my very own Tesla. I ordered my car in late January of 2020, well before this whole global pandemic thing broke out. Since the car I spec'd out wasn't available in their inventory, it had to be built. And at that time, the website was showing a four to six week delivery time. After a wait that felt like forever, I got the call from the folks at Tesla of Nashville letting me know that it was time to come and get it. I picked up my rental car, which Tesla kindly reimburses you for, and I headed out early the next morning. Here's our rental car. Nissan Rogue. Oh, look, we've got this sequential mode here. So, go down here, over here. <laughs> All right, everybody, today's the day. Let's hit the road. Next stop, Nashville. So the Nissan Rogue isn't too bad, but I'll say they just are killing you with all the lights. I mean, I got this light flashing over here, some sort of blind spot thing going off. I got that beep happening constantly. I have no idea why. I'm trying not to make the cloud disappear. Okay, I'm just driving down the road and it's just blinking. The cloud won't stop blinking at me. Tiny cloud, why are you just continuously blinking at me? I'm just driving down the road, minding my own business. Okay, everybody, we're in the Nashville area now. I'm about 10 minutes away from my exit, and needless to say, I'm terribly excited. Thankfully, the rain tapered off on the ride over, and after a three and a half hour drive, I pulled into Tesla of Nashville in Brentwood, Tennessee. I'd never been to a Tesla showroom before, and I gotta say, this was a super cool experience. There are very few Teslas running around my area, so it was fun to see so many in one place and check out the different models and variants.
As the delivery specialist was printing out my paperwork, a Tesla employee lifted up the garage door in the showroom to let in some fresh air, and I spotted my car outside. My heart raced. I couldn't believe this was actually happening after so many years of dreaming, reading countless articles, and watching what feels like every single Tesla video on YouTube. The people at Tesla knew I needed to turn around and head back home quickly, so my car was outside, charged up, and ready for its trip to Knoxville. The whole delivery and inspection process was fast and simple thanks to most of the car buying steps being handled on the Tesla website beforehand. Compared to a normal car buying experience, this felt so much simpler and just how it should be for any car. Okay, let's hit the road. All right, folks, we just left the Tesla dealership. This thing is a spaceship, I'm telling you. You know, the weirdest thing was pulling out of the parking space. They had it backed in there at the dealership and just putting it in drive and pulling out with no sound, no starting. Um, I mean, really a strange spaceship-like experience right off the bat, but the thing drives so well. I mean, it just feels really planted and solid. It's so quiet in here. Really love it so far. I'm just kind of tinkering around a little bit with the um, cruise control and stuff, getting a feel of the car but it drives really amazing so far heading down the interstate. Since I was making good time and it was on my way, I decided to visit the Knoxville Supercharger Station for a quick blast of energy before heading home. That was a fun and easy experience. I just plugged in and went to a nearby coffee shop for my version of supercharging, a giant cold brew coffee. Mmm, so jittery right now. Now that we're back home, let me formally introduce you to my 2020 Tesla Model S performance. So there it is, my first electric car. After I've had the car for a bit, I'll be posting a more detailed overview with my driving impressions, but for now, here are the basics. I chose the pearl white multi-coat paint, all black interior with carbon fiber decor, and the 19-inch Sonic Carbon Slipstream wheels. As much as I love the look of the 21-inch wheels, I do lots of driving on bumpy old, pothole-filled country roads which aren't too kind to super low-profile tires. In future videos, I'll tell you what it's like to own and drive, we'll make some improvements here and there, and of course we'll do plenty of 0 to 60 and quarter mile tests. Oh, and I now have a Tesla referral link, so if you click on that link, you'll get a thousand miles of free supercharging if you buy a Tesla. So everyone, go ahead and drop everything and place your orders. Appreciate that. Oh, and I have a big favor to ask of you guys. On the onboard computer, Tesla encourages you to name your car. So please leave your ideas in the comments below. I'll gladly accept serious and not so serious submissions. So have at it. Before I go, I'd like to thank fellow Tesla enthusiasts like Brooks from Drag Times, Charles from the Tesla Racing Channel, Rich Rebuilds, Eric, Ben Sullen, Ryan Shaw, and last but certainly not least, Ryan from the Ride the Lightning podcast. These folks were all big influences over the years and all produce excellent Tesla related content. So please check them out if you're interested in Tesla or EVs in general. Thank you for watching and don't forget to come hang out with me at any of these spots. I'd love to hear from you. So with that said, thanks again folks. We'll see you next time.